Before we jump into today's episode of Chicago Bears Now, the June subscriber battle with Vikings now is heating up. We've closed the gap a little bit. Vikings have had a strong month in terms of subscribers. We're 104 behind my good friend Patrick Seatman and Vikings Now. If you want daily free Chicago Bears content, and if you want to take down Vikings Now, hit that subscribe button. Let's dive in. I'm Harrison Graham. This is Chicago Bears Now. The forgotten man of this team is Karan Amagaji, the third-round pick out of Yale. I kind of want to just dive into him a little bit more, like into his background. We did this with Braxton Jones when he was drafted. I kind of want to do it here. Just I think a guy that we're just kind of forgetting about, and understandably so. He missed all the spring. Uh, he uh, is dealing with an injury, but... Uh, I think this guy is a pretty intriguing player, and uh, I just want to talk about him a little bit more on today's show. So who is Karan Amagaji? Some background here. Well, he's from Hinsdale, Illinois, near Chicago. Went to Hinsdale Central. A lot of you guys should be familiar uh, with that high school. So that's pretty cool. That was a big uh, talking point around draft time when they took him. Matt Eberflus told the story of where he run into, ran into Karan and his dad the year before on the golf course. And Karan walked up to him, introduced himself, and said, hey, you're going to draft me next year. And they did, which is kind of an amazing story for him to do that as a Yale football player, and it ends up happening. So uh, the, the Bears connection's there. He's been a fan his whole life, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next is he was a two-star recruit in 2020. Uh, out of Hinsdale Central, despite being this big athletic offensive lineman, uh, only had four scholarship offers. Uh, Yale, Central Michigan, Indiana State, and Southern Illinois per 24-7 sports. Now, maybe there were a couple of other small school ones. I'm sure some D2s and stuff like that offered him. Uh, but uh, these are the only like notable offers that are listed on his recruiting page. So he opts to go to Yale and is a three-year starter there. And, um, you know, we've covered his time at Yale a little bit, but to kind of rehash that, uh, he gets there, and they found out pretty quickly that this kid has talent. Uh, he started his first season there as a left guard. Uh, and then the last two years, he was a left tackle. Now, last year, his season got cut short. We'll get to that in a second. But I like his positional versatility. He could play guard. He could play tackle. I think that could help this team maybe even this year. We'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. But three-year starter, graded out well per PFF. And look, if you're going to get drafted in the third round out of Yale, you better dominate your competition. And that's exactly what he did. He was a dominant force. He could have transferred after his sophomore year and played at a bigger D1 school, decides to stay at Yale, which I think speaks volumes. And uh, obviously he got hurt last year, which was a bummer. But uh, I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, he's been recovering from a quad injury, did not participate in rookie minicamp, OTAs, or mandatory minicamp. He was there. He's off to the side. He's doing rehab stuff. Uh, Matt Eberflus did say that he should be ready by the time training camp gets here, which would be huge for him for a lot of different reasons. But even if you, the Bears don't have big plans for him this year, like he need to start stacking some reps here. So uh, hopefully he is cleared and ready to return to the practice field uh, in late July because, uh, like I said, got to start building those reps. All right, let's go back in time a little bit. Late April, draft night. Did you like drafting Kron Amagaji in the third round? Type Y for yes and for no. Like when it happened, were you like, yay, or were you like, eh, or were you somewhere in the middle, kind of where I was, where I was like, okay, intriguing, but I might have gone elsewhere. Y for yes and for no. Did you like drafting him in the third round? Okay, now let's get to his rookie outlook because, you know, I mentioned him as the forgotten man. I do wonder if there are scenarios where he could contribute this year. Now, step number one for Karan Amagaji, get healthy for training camp. Sorry for the typo there. Get healthy for training camp, get out there, and get reps because he missed out on rookie minicamp. He missed out on OTAs, mandatory minicamp. This is a guy that, yes, dominated at Yale, but let's be honest, he's coming out of Yale. There's probably some technical things he needs to work on. He probably needs to get kind of going on the uh, NFL strength and conditioning program. Like, he missed out on some of that in early start here. So be healthy is number one. Number two, building off of that, get healthy, start getting reps. 
Um, I don't think he'll work with the ones a ton at training camp, but get with the twos, go up against the number one, number two defense sometimes. Uh, you know, get those one-on-one -on -one battles that you always see at training camp. Uh, hey, throw him out there against Javon Dexter, guy looking to take a step in year two. See how he holds up. Like, let's get these reps going, work on the technique stuff. Uh, with the offensive line coach Chris Morgan, uh, you just you got to start. There's nothing like reps in anything you do in life. A lot of people are talented. I think I, I think every person's born with at least one talent. But if you don't work at it, if you don't practice it, if before that, if you don't figure out what that talent is, but then put the work into it to mastering that craft, eh, you got no shot. Especially in the NFL, it's got to get reps. Number three, in terms of uh, this year's outlook, ideal role. I think swing tackle. Um, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. he's got 36-inch arms, he's athletic. I think ideally he's your number three tackle this year. Um, you know, hopefully he has a strong enough camp in preseason where they feel comfortable with him in that role. You've got, you've got Matt Pryor and Larry Borum if he's not quite ready for that. But uh, I think your number three tackle would be an ideal role. But I think a sneaky potential role is guard insurance. I mentioned his first year at Yale, he started at left guard and played well. Now, typically, like, his body type and frame, that's an NFL tackle. But that doesn't mean he can't kick inside either. I think he's got enough strength to play inside. Like, I've questioned that with Braxton Jones. I don't really question the strength with Karan Amagaji. I think he is stronger than Braxton Jones. So, um, you know, you look at this, and what have we talked about a lot recently on this show? Well, the interior's got questions. He's not going to play center for you, so you can kind of eliminate him from consideration there with Ryan Bates and Colton Shelton. But Tevin Jenkins, he has an injury history. Love Tevin. Hope he plays all 17 games and gets an extension. But history tells us that probably won't happen. Nate Davis also has injury concerns and has just kind of been unreliable. Could Karan Amagaji work for reps at guard this season? The interior has questions. They, it just does. Uh, I like Jatiri Carter. I think he's been a nice story to stick around as a seventh-round pick. Amagaji is much more talented. He just is. He's stronger, he's bigger, he's more athletic. Um, you know, Matt Pryor was getting some work at both guard and tackle uh, in the offseason program. But Amagaji's more talented. Again, he's got to get in there and get reps first. But, like, I do wonder if, like, a situation pops up in the middle of the year. He's gone through a few months of practice. Like, could he be the guy you turn to if there's an injury on the interior? It wouldn't completely shock me. So that's just something to think about uh, throughout the course of the season. I think long term – Starting tackle or guard, that's what you're hoping for when you take a guy in the third round that he becomes a starter. But for this year, I'm not ruling out him having an impact. I'm going to set the over-under at starts for Karan Amagaji this year. One and a half. One and a half starts. Do you think he starts over one and a half games or under? I'd probably bet the under. If I set it at half game, I'd probably take the over. Because there could be a week 18 scenario where you're just resting starters. You want to get guys reps. There could be multiple injuries that happen. Like, right now, I would guess he's not your sixth offensive lineman. That's probably Matt Pryor or someone else. But I do think there is a scenario where he is starting games at some point this season. So I'll set it at one and a half. O for over or U for under. There you go. A deeper dive into Karan Amagaji, a fascinating player, awesome name, local flair, playing at Hinsdale Central. I think that's sweet. Uh, we'll see uh, how big his role and impact is this year. Hopefully first he gets healthy for training camp.